Welcome to Silicon Valley Successes. We interview experts and entrepreneurs to give the world access to the knowledge and experience that is here in Silicon Valley. Our mission is to create opportunities for those who seek them and help you to become the next Silicon Valley success. Welcome to Silicon Valley Successes. So on today's show, we have Jock, who is a social media expert. He works with companies from early stage to corporations to plan their social media and give them tips and tricks on, on best practices and how to succeed. But before we start, Jock, could you please introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be here. <laughs> and like you just said, I'm Jock Ridewiser, and um, I've been dealing with uh, social media for a number of years and eventually came from a position of not liking it at all to then really becoming a huge fan and um, starting my own business around it. So I'm um, excited to be here and share some insights. Tell me about that journey because you said you didn't like it. I did and not. And now no. you're 9 to 5 and probably 9 to 9 because of Silicon Valley right. is, is focused on it. So the transition, tell me about that path. Yeah, it, was, it was an interesting path indeed. And so I initially really um, ran corporate communications for um, companies and so had been running a lot of corporate social media accounts and so mm. very familiar with that and um, obviously a very effective way of, of um, getting the name and the brand out there and then at the same time I was having my own personal social media accounts on Twitter LinkedIn and Facebook and after looking at them for a little bit, I realized they didn't really do much for me. So I looked at right. the people connecting with me, I looked at the people looking at my profiles, and it just wasn't the right people. I didn't get any traction, I didn't hmm. get any kind of results. And I came to a point where I essentially decided to just pull the plug and just get out of it and, really? yeah, and, and not continue it anymore because there was no point, uh, you know, I thought, for me yeah. in doing so. And then when you're saying you didn't get any results, are you saying no one liked your tweets or yeah. no one reposted or yeah, what wasn't, it, or it just was, no one responded was, to your messages? I wasn't so much looking for fame or anything like that. I, I was, so for example, on LinkedIn, um, just looking at the people that visited my profile, um, looking at, you know, the kind of connections I made, hmm. um, there just was not really the, the kind of the right kind of audience that I was looking to engage with. Okay. So I was looking for, let's say, mentors or mm. um, people that I could connect with professionally or and learn from, right? Or maybe that would, you know, help me in my career development. Okay. And there was nothing like that. It was mostly salespeople. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> nothing against that. It was just not what I was looking for personally at, at that point in time. Okay. And so it's more of a nuisance than anything. Well. I wouldn't call it that, but it definitely didn't really benefit okay. um, me in that sense. And um, so because I decided then to essentially get out of it, um, I figured I might as well just mess with the system a little bit and see what happens. And so I started um, turning the screws a little bit and posting things that otherwise I wouldn't have posted. And um, all of a sudden I saw actually really interesting results. Huh. And so that intrigued me. And then I started just digging a little bit deeper and started essentially just fine tuning um, the system and learning a little bit more about social media and how, how you can actually really drive it with a purpose. Okay. And once I started doing that, it became amazingly impactful. And so I learned from that lesson and then um, really changed my entire approach to it. Okay. So if I'm an early stage company and I want to start a social media campaign, drive it with the purpose, as you just said, what should my initial thought be? How do I plan it out? What are the steps? And I know that's a huge question, but you know, take your time. What should my thought process be? Yeah, it's, it, 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 it can be a really big question, right? But at mm -hmm. the same time, um, it can be very simple, right? And at the end of the day, the biggest thing that you need to have is you need to have a purpose. You need to think about what you're trying to achieve. And many individuals as well as companies that I'm engaging with, mm -hmm. they essentially just go on social media because they, they feel it's a necessity and they, they just want to get their name out and they're, tr they're trying the best they can. Okay. And in many cases, that is not really a good strategy. Um, because it just means you're going to pump out content without really a whole lot of purpose. There's no positioning, right? You don't really, you don't have a goal that you aim for. Okay. And so, you know, thinking about 
the perspective of what you're trying to get out of it. So, for example, are you looking to are you looking to get people to visit your profile? Are you looking to maybe um, get people to attend webinars or watch mm. specific episodes of a TV show, right? Okay. Things like that. You have to think about that from that perspective and then essentially reverse engineer, think about, okay, so what's, you know, what is attracting those people? Who are they? What, do, what are they looking to get out of it? And why should they be engaging with me on social media of all things? Okay, so say I have a purpose to get more people to watch a hypothetical TV show. Well, I'm just, <laughs> just coming up with this right now. What, what would the first steps be to try to get to that end goal? Right. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really good question. And um, the, way, the way you go about this is really think about the people that would potentially be benefiting from your product, so from this hypothetical TV show. Yeah. Right. And so you would think about, okay, so what do they do? Uh, what are their titles? You know, what do they do during the day, potentially? So you essentially build a buyer persona, oh. right? You, you kind of... Tell, what bio persona? Can you tell, talk about that a little bit? That was my accent, sorry. I, I meant you build a buyer persona. Oh, okay. So you, you think about, you know, who buys your product or who just watches your show, right? Okay. And so you think about in most specific terms about the individual that you're trying to reach, right? Okay. And from there, then you essentially just try to tie back into what they're looking to achieve and you really then tailor your message, for example, on social media mm. to help them understand this particular TV show is exactly what you're looking to get out of it. And by watching it, you can learn amazing things. You get maybe recipes, how you can be successful in Silicon Valley. Mm. Right? Maybe you learn tricks from professionals that otherwise you wouldn't be able to meet or that otherwise you wouldn't be able to speak to, things like that. Right? Oh. And social selling and is essentially the same thing. right? So. When you look at LinkedIn, for instance, mm. right, many people on LinkedIn, uh, they want to sell something, right? Maybe yeah. it's themselves, maybe they have a product, maybe they are in particular industries like real estate, insurance, right, or high tech sales, whatever it might be, it doesn't really matter. And so many people then talk about their title, their VP of sales or something mm. like that, or they um, you know, they talk about being a director of something and having made clubs on so many times. Uh -huh. right? And that's not particularly helpful to me, assuming that I'm the person wanting to buy a particular product, yeah. right? Because I don't want to know about how you made club 15 times. Yeah. Right? I want to know how you help the people like me achieve what they are looking yeah. to, to address in their life, right? Okay. So how do you how do you solve my problem essentially? So if I wanted to start a social media campaign, would you recommend starting on LinkedIn and trying to convey that one problem to people, or would you recommend what would your tips and tricks be for LinkedIn, I guess, and right. then talk about other social medias after that? Yeah. So the the interesting thing is it it really depends a lot on that you know, that audience that you're looking to achieve, right? Mm -hmm. There's no silver bullet. There's no particular um, platform that is particularly great for anybody, right? Oh. And so Facebook doesn't have all the answers. It doesn't, unfortunately. No. Oh. <laughs> it has many answers, <laughs> <laughs> some, some of which you may or may not like. <laughs> and um, so the, the thing is really think about, you know, this persona that you're trying to, to engage with, right? Um, what platform are they most likely to use, right? Okay. Are they most likely um, to be found on Facebook or are they maybe more on LinkedIn? You know, where do they share content? What kind of content do they consume? And so from that perspective, then you think about the one or two platforms that you actually are going to be engaging with okay. and that you're going to be using in order to actually speak to your audience. So there's, there's no particular, um, like I said, you know, one size fits all approach, right? You really have to think about it every time, you know, depending on, you know, are you trying to do this for your own personal needs? Mm. You know, are you trying to help a business? And in many cases, it really varies quite a bit. Um, on the other hand, you know, there's, there are some common threads, right? So yeah. for example, for B2B companies, in many cases, a combination of Twitter and LinkedIn is fabulous. Okay. It, it works great, right? Because professionals mm. are, 
on LinkedIn, and they also, in many cases, have, for example, a Twitter profile, or the company has a Twitter mm -hmm. profile because it's relatively easy to maintain, right? And so companies will use that combination um, as a sales channel, essentially, or to, t to share news about their business. Okay. And, um, you know, when you have consumer products, just generally speaking, maybe Pinterest and Instagram and a combination of these two together with Facebook might be much more appropriate and much more effective. Interesting. So say I was a new client and I came to you and I said, you know, our company, we just raised our first round of funding. We now have some money to actually pay for a social media campaign. Our product is um, in the, the baby industry. How would you go about making suggestions or how would you go about the, the onboarding process for a new client in that situation? Right. So the, the process for, for anybody who wants to help you know, that particular company yeah. should be one where they really try to understand the business model. Right? It's about understanding what is this business trying to do? Right? So are they trying to sell to mothers? Um, are they trying to sell a particular product maybe to, to families in particular? Mm -hmm. Is it maybe an insurance or maybe an education kind of you know, financial foundation that you want to lay for your, for your baby so that they can go to college later on? Right? Okay. So this, there's a whole variety of, of products, obviously, that somebody can mm -hmm. have. So you need to understand as a consultant, how, you know, what are they trying to do mm -hmm. and what are they already doing, right? Because huh. um, the important thing is also, you know, when you, when you look at social selling, it shouldn't be standing on, on its own, right? It needs to tie into everything that a company is already doing, right? Interesting. So, um, for example, if you have a marketing campaign where you have webinars or where you, um, I don't know, where you set up events, right? Yeah. You want to make sure that those things tie together and that they amplify each other, right? Social media is a fantastic tool for amplification of things like that. Huh. But, you know, if you, if you just talk about yourself again, you know, if you don't show the benefit of attending a webinar or a particular event, you know, then, um, then you're kind of losing your audience, right? So yeah. it's, it's all about helping that audience understand why should I be talking to this company? Why should I? Why? Why does it matter? Right? How is it going to impact my life? How is it going to make my life better? At the end of the day, you mm -hmm. know, that's what everybody's looking for as an individual. Right? Everybody is trying to find a solution to a personal or to a business problem. Right? And so, if you talk to people on social media, if you want to do social selling, that is really what you need to understand. How do you solve somebody's problem? If you just mm -hmm. talk about yourself. If you just talk about you know how awesome your product is, oh. nobody's going to care about that. Right? Oh, that's what I was going to lead into I right know. now is how <laughs> awesome a product this is. But that's the first part of today's episode with Jock. Uh, we talked about uh, the ideas about your social media uh, strategies. Coming back in our second part, we're going to focus a little bit more on startups, their planning. Little, we're going to go back to webinars and some other things that were brought up to emphasize those and see what ideas startups might be missing. So, all right, let's go back to part, or start part two right now. You mentioned webinars before. Oh, I forgot to say, please visit us on siliconvalleysuccesses.com. <laughs> I'll edit that later. <laughs> you talked about webinars a little bit before. Is that something that startups are missing out on or, or many clients that you've talked to are missing out on for engaging potential customers? That's a great question. I, I do think webinars can be extremely effective. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, if you make them part of your marketing mix, um, if you promote them on, on social media, if you um, show value in a particular webinar, those are great resources, right? Because you can get terrific sound bites from a webinar. You, mm -hmm. can show, um, you can show your audience how you actually help address a particular problem. But again, you know, it's, it's also about making sure that the content of, you know, whatever webinar or event you're setting up really helps that audience solve a problem. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, you know, it sounds extremely simple, but that's really what it's all about. Right? You, you want to make sure that in that webinar, yeah. you, don't, you don't just talk about your products and how fantastic they are. Right? It's about maybe showcasing a customer that you oh. helped, right? Maybe you How would you go about getting those testimonials from those customers, a brand new company? Well, I think the the thing is in in marketing, you know, the 
the value that you want to share with your customers is one where they, again, you know, you want to work with them and you want to showcase them. You want to show how they have been successfully able to actually make a change in their current strategy or maybe how they were able to turn something around that didn't work, right? Huh. And so giving them an opportunity to showcase themselves mm -hmm. and saying, and by the way, company X happened to be part of that process yeah. or, you know, we were able to, to work with them on improving a particular part of our strategy, that goes a long way, right? So it's, I think it's really an opportunity for you to showcase how a company then has been able to turn things around successfully mm. and really share that success and give them a platform and who wouldn't want to talk about that. Are there platforms in particular you would avoid or stay away from? Maybe Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook so, or Pinterest. Uh, I know those were all mentioned, but is there one or two that are growing and others that are shrinking or, I mean, no, I, I don't think so. You know, I, I think there, there are specific webinar platforms, um, but I think as far as sharing that content goes, mm. um, doing little takeouts, for example, from, from a webinar, um, creating snippets that are maybe 90 seconds or two minutes long, right? okay. and creating that kind of visual content, um, that is actually a fantastic way of promoting um, something that you have to say through social media channels to different audiences, right? Because visual audience, uh, visual visual content is extremely easy to consume, right? Yeah. Um, people don't necessarily like reading, you know, <laughs> five hundred thousand <laughs> words, um, and it's really hard to squeeze that into your into your workday, right? Yeah. So you know, being able to watch ninety seconds on a video that are compelling that show you how a company that is maybe similar to yours was able to solve a problem, that goes a long way. Hmm. And as a company, what are some metrics that I should be looking at to see if my social media campaigns were successful or right. that I'm actually getting my money's worth? Right. The, the challenge with measuring social media is that there's a lot of different ways of looking at that, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, you could look at vanity metrics, I call them, right? So mm -hmm. you could look at is the number of followers increasing, right? That in it by itself is great. You definitely want to see your accounts grow, but it's not necessarily something that speaks volumes about the success, right? Because mm -hmm. ultimately, as a business, what you want to achieve through social media is you want to see traction in your business, right? Okay. So you can gain 5,000 followers, but nobody is engaging with you or nobody is buying your product as a result. So the result is still net zero, right? Okay. And so what you want to see is you want to see engagement with your audience. You want to see people maybe um, clicking on the links that you share on social media so that they come to specific landing pages, right? Hmm. You want to see maybe subscribers to your email newsletter so that you can actually gain um, influence and that you can reach out to more people and hopefully yeah. convince them to buy your product or your service. Right? And yeah. um, I think ultimately it's also about the, the relationship between marketing and sales. Okay. Right? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, the, the sales marketing relationship is, is really important, right? And in, in many companies, what you find is um, both departments essentially, you know, march down their own path and they kind of run separately. Okay. And at the end of the day, that's not really what you want, right? You, huh. you want sales and marketing to be one word yeah. and you want that team to jointly understand that they're really trying to solve the same ki kind of challenges, right? And one is on the front lines, yeah. the sales team, right? The other one is trying to drive awareness, trying to get interest, mm. right? Trying to get leads, right? And so ultimately, marketing without sales is nothing and likewise, right? right? So both teams really have to work alongside and they have to be in lockstep. And Does one lead the other? You said lockstep, so really they're moving together at the same time. I then. think it's it's really moving together and I think it's about getting a joint understanding between the leaders of both teams. Okay. And um, so, you know, when you look at marketing and social media or social selling in particular, that was to me actually one of the reasons why I got into social selling. Huh. So after realizing the power of social media, you know, on my personal accounts, I figured you know, it's a great way to actually help the sales team be successful because okay. if I can use social media 
to teach sales teams how to build their profiles, how to build audiences, oh. how to actually share relevant content and then drive inbound leads. That yeah. is extremely helpful, right? Huh. And so that's what I've been doing for, for many years. Are, and Would you say a lot of companies aren't fully utilizing? Oh, social? absolutely. Really? Yeah, yeah this, the, there's a lot of challenges in, in social selling, right? And okay. What are some of them? So some are, for example, some people just really don't feel they belong into social media, right? They have mm -hmm. never seen any success from it. They just prefer to essentially go you know, with picking up the phone or sending an email. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, that's not how, how the life cycle of the buyer has developed, right? So okay. the buyer today does a lot of research, right? The buyer is really shaping how the sales cycle has um, progressed, right? So buyers do a lot of research online and they speak to, um, they speak to a lot of vendors, but only when they feel they have the right information, right? Interesting. So for, for the salesperson to actually use social media and help the buyer understand, hey, I'm an expert in this field, whether or not you end up buying my product may not be that relevant, yeah. but I can definitely share interesting information with you. You and I should talk, right? And right. building yourself that position of a trusted resource as somebody who has valuable information, that is something that then on social media allows me to actually leverage social to gain influence in the buying process and make sure that you think of me when you want to buy your next car okay. or when you want to buy a piece of software. So the social media information out there is actually kind of guided and shaping that customer in his research and, and you have to position it for them to come back to you through that path. Is that a way to say yeah, it or yeah, not? Yeah, no, I, I think that's exactly how I would say it. And so it, it's a little bit backwards, you know, when you think about it. It's almost like a, like a white paper or a byline article that you read in a newspaper, right? Mm. You read the article and somebody says something really smart. And you think, and you know, you read it and then in the end you say, oh, that's really good. I should use that information. Who wrote that? Oh, this guy from this and this company. Okay. I want to talk to him or her or I want to see what kind of product that company has. And mm. on social media, it's essentially very similar, right? You offer up information you try to really genuinely help and it's really about building that relationship being that trusted advisor and and really yeah. trying to help somebody make a step forward in solving the problem that they have by offering up information that's valuable how would you know what gap in the problem you're trying to solve the gap i mean the information that you're missing out there in social media how can you discover that and what i mean by that is say you're trying to solve this one problem for this customer and you have all this social media out there but for some reason you're missing this one little segment right there how do you go about discovering that that's what you're missing right so you know again um on on social media and, and using it for for the sales process mm -hmm. um you really have to think about you know where your buyer is and what their what their issues are right mm -hmm. and so um it's entirely possible that that you that you miss a piece yeah. and what i what i always advise um companies that i work with is also to take smart risks right and uh -huh. and so experiment a little bit and you know you have to consider also the buyer is not static right it's yeah. not it's not something that is just defined and then it doesn't move anymore you know trends tastes you know you know all these things just shift over time and so you know you also must really consider you know you're not a one-dimensional person right yeah you're not just i hope not <laughs> you're not right you have you have different interests maybe you have maybe you have a family right maybe mm. you do sports right so there's many different levels how you can engage with people mm. and using social media is actually a great way to to figure that that one out right so for mm. example twitter and linkedin yeah. fundamentally different right on linkedin you have a much more structured and much more formal kind of conversation on Twitter, it's very conversational, right? Sometimes it's like a bar, right? And people yeah. are shouting over each other and whatnot. And so being able to figure out what does this person say on Twitter, right? What's their personality? Mm -hmm. What do they say about themselves? What are their personal opinion? And how do they represent themselves, for example, in a professional network like LinkedIn, right? Yeah. What are their interests there? And then being able to strike up a conversation about different elements 
mm. and different aspects of a personality that actually I've seen work fantastically in, in the sales process. You okay, know? so we've talked about the pro solving the problem for the, for the client or the, the potential buyer. We've talked about how different social medias, there's a different type of voice or feel to it, such as LinkedIn and Twitter. What haven't we talked about that you really think is important that people should know? I would say for, for everybody to, to get in that and really um, give social media a chance, that, that would be the first thing that I would say. Because mm -hmm. I think you know, many times people just get into social and they, they give it a shot and then they give up. And I think there's huge potential, A, from a business side, mm -hmm. but also personally, I've met amazing people, both professionally and, and personally on, on social media, that otherwise I never would have met, right? So that's one. Um, I think consistency is big, right? I see many mm -hmm. people fail on social because they try to do too many things at once. Okay. And they try to be on five platforms and they try to blog and then it doesn't work and after two weeks they give up because they're burned out. Okay. And so, you know, limiting yourself and actually doing the right thing and consistently doing it for an extended period of time is, is something else. Yeah. Um, and then the third one I would say is probably investing in social media, both from a financial but also from a time perspective. And so from a financial perspective in terms of um, getting services that maybe cost you $50 a month or $100 a month uh, can be really, really effective because you get much better services. What are some of those services? And then 30 seconds to talk about how people can contact you and your services. Um, so in terms of services, for example, Buffer is a great tool right. um, just to manage your social media um, presence, right? It makes it really, really easy and allows you to stage a lot of content. So that's mm -hmm. one, twenty dollars a month. That's really good investment. Um, and there's some others, right? So like really, really. interesting research tools um, in terms of reaching me. Yeah. Um, I have a phone number. It's four zero eight eight hundred jock J O C K. Oh yeah. Um, so that's that is one. And um, there's a website socialcellinator dot com. Can you say that one more time? Socialcellinator dot com. Right. And yeah, I'm online on All Twitter right. and LinkedIn. Jock, thank you for your time here today on Silicon Valley Successes, and we look forward to everyone uh, next week when we bring you another episode. Thank you. Thank you from all of us at Silicon Valley Successes. We hope you found the information presented today useful in your path to success. For further information on accessing the resources in Silicon Valley, you may visit us on the web at siliconvalleysuccesses.com, on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you. And remember, we want to help you in your journey to become the next success.